For more insight on what's happening in the business world, let's bring in Brian Weinstein. He is the CIO of Blue Elephant Capital Management. Brian, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Uh, Brian, the markets are resilient. They are shrugging off cyber attacks, uh, North Korea testing missiles, and all of this chaos, which you can't even keep up with, coming from the Trump administration. Explain. Yes, now I wish I had the answer. It's amazing, <laughs> right? I mean, it's. I guess part of it would be fatigue. You can't keep track of which scandal to keep track of, so maybe the markets don't care. I think that's actually not true. Listen, so with I, all the noise, you just ignore everything? Well, I think there's, there's still central bank buying going on. I hate to go back to an old boring answer, but $3.6 trillion in purchases by central banks this year. Um, so we're about a billion, a trillion odd into that. I think that depresses volatility. And the problem is when you're artificially depressing volatility, if, if you know a central bank is going to buy the dip, then there's no dip. So right. we've seen some dips after Brexit or after the, the, the Trump election results, and they're bought so hard that now there's not even a dip. So I feel like volatility, in some ways, a lack of volatility what, is... What could reverse this? What needs to happen? And not that I'm saying it should happen, but what would happen to create that volatility and to see the sell-off that people have been predicting needs to happen? Listen, I think either you have to have one of these scandals become a full-blown crisis, you know, actually have something besides the, the people who have always been against Trump, uh, you know, sound off on him, you have his own party turn, that seems like it won't happen, I doubt it happens. The other thing is, the other the long-term story, the Trump story on, we're going to create growth, we're going to have infrastructure mm. spend, those are long-term things. It's hard to disprove those in a couple months. So I have a feeling that low volatility is here for a little while. Even though so far they haven't yielded uh, any results and tax reform is going to be very problematic. Health reform was certainly a challenge still very much so. They, they're still betting on the Trump bump? I, I still think that people believe that growth is coming. I mean, listen, it's been the story since 2008. But if you asked me to outlay kind of what growth would be from 2008 on, I was always a bear on growth. And that mm -hmm. was right. But markets didn't care. They continued <laughs> to go up. So I, I do think it's hard to, to change the narrative of growth is coming. Again, you have to have a catastrophic failure of some sort of policy or, or of, of the economic data really turning. And it just kind of feels like 2006 when you had months and months and months of nothing happening. And mm -hmm. it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy, even though the facts suggest that maybe it shouldn't be. Well, uh, speaking of uh, the president and his impact on the markets, we heard from uh, J.P. Morgan's Jamie Diamond at the annual shareholder meeting, and uh, he says he supports Trump. He is actually on Trump's strategic and policy forum. He says that first and foremost, he's a patriot. Well, what's your reaction? Well, listen, I think, uh, listen, I think Jamie Dimon's right. There, there is some level at which you are supposed to give the president some room to, to enact policy. And if I was the CEO of a bank and the president was trying to roll back reform, I think that would make me more bullish on my bank as well. Absolutely. So, and and it, it's, been, it's been a stellar run for J.P. Morgan. Yeah. You know, J.P. Morgan's a, a very well-run company, and I think what they do best is that they know how to take risk. They didn't get in trouble in the crisis, and that really allowed them to be a price maker when everyone else was a price taker. And, and that has made the reputation even better better. So if you ask someone who's the safest bank, you get that answer. It's again culturally, I think, uh, of just very well run. It gives them a lot of leeway to, uh, to, 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 to really make a lot of money for their investors. Oh, and they certainly have. Uh, very quickly, I want to get your thoughts on that layoff at Ford. Uh, what is your reaction and what's your outlook for the U.S. auto industry? Yeah, well, you asked about cyclical and what, you know, what could stop this thing. I think you are seeing cyclical signs of a top. Right? I think you are peaking in auto sales. I think you've seen a lot of cheap financing get its way through. And you've started to see changes where subprime auto lending is getting tighter, standards are getting better. And there's about 4 million cars coming off of lease, uh, about a million more than in 2015. So I think you're starting to see, and maybe Ford's getting ahead of, or trying to, I mean, mm. their equity obviously haven't gotten ahead enough, but there, I think you're seeing a slowdown in the auto industry, and I think it's Canary a sign. Canary in the coal mine? Again, I think there's a couple things, but cyclically, I think Trump, the president, better get some growth initiatives out there because I do think there are some pressures that are slowing down growth away from him uh, if the current policies stay the way they are. All right, thank you so much, Brian Weinstein.